About half of seniors are dying in hospitals. That's according to research by Healthy Aging and Evidence Network.ca expert Verena Menick. She says that isn't the right place for many frail elderly patients, many of whom say they want to die at home. Lindsay Jolivia looks at how palliative care home doctors see dying differently. Good morning, Administrator. It is now 9.46 a.m. The CPC and database has 75 active patient files. At Dr. Louise Coulomb's Ottawa office, a cold, computerized voice manages a very personal kind of care. Coulomb travels the city each day, visiting palliative care patients at home. And she says it's much different than hospital care. You basically see people in four dimensions at home. You walk in and immediately you know they're different from everybody else. You see them in depth, not just where they are now, but where they have been. Coulomb gets in her car to go visit Russell Peacock, and I have permission to come along. Russell is an 89-year-old man with thyroid cancer. He lives alone in a small bungalow. Coulomb calls him a great talker. Good morning. Man. Have a oh, seat. I had a terrible day today. Why? Uh, yesterday, I mean. Why? I went shopping with my brother. He came over and. Would I was you sit ex- down, please? He was exhausted. <laughs> so am I. Oh, brother. There you go. <laughs> Peacock could live from three months to six months or more. Well, here I am. I don't know how long it'll be, but I don't care. You just live it day by day anyway. You know? Live everything day by day. He's lived in this house since shortly after he returned from serving in the Second World War. He still remembers the date he moved in, October 30th, 1947. 54 years I've been here. Oh, jeez, imagine that my whole life gone. It's only your age, I guess, <laughs> when we moved in. Peacock's wife, Vera, died here, and this is where he'd like to stay. So we stayed here, and we're, I'm still here, still keeping me in my house. Between the doctors there and palliative care, I can handle it, you know. (laughs) Soon, it's time to leave. Take care. Bye-bye now. Dr. Coulomb says our medical system is slowly changing to accommodate practices like hers. We started to feel that we could conquer death. And we're learning in the last 15, 30 years that we can't. They are beginning to see that this is part of life. Instead, before it was separated completely, and you died in a dark place in a hospital, and that's how you did it in this society. Recent research, like the work of Verena Menick, still finds that many visits to the hospital by elderly patients are preventable. Menick holds a Canada Research Chair in Healthy Aging at the University of Manitoba. She says there are many reasons why the hospital isn't set up to care for seniors. It's very stressful to the person who is dying in that setting, but it can also be very stressful for the family, Many bounce in and out of emergency rooms several times at the end of their lives. Imagine a 92-year-old person, frail, confused. They're coming into an emergency department and they die in an emergency department. Without having the family, there's that whole bustle of that emergency department. I think that's really sad. Advocates like Sharon Carstairs say the strain on the system will be damaging if we don't change how we deliver health care. And soon, we're actually going to go backwards unless we make a significant change in the way we deliver care. Carstairs retired from Canada's Senate after 17 years advocating for a bigger focus on palliative care. She says we need to reinvent the health care system to avoid debt from rising costs. We need more doctors. We need more nurses. We need more health care professionals generally who are trained in palliative medicine. We need greater research and we need home care. Hospital care can cost the system about $1,000 a day. Hospice care cuts those costs in half. And home care can also be less expensive, depending on the type of care the patient needs. Carceres says it's time to face the reality that 100% of people die and start providing more settings where patients can be comfortable and surrounded by family, where care becomes more than medical treatment. It's about writing a happy ending to a life story. I'm Lindsay Jolivet.